The third kind of ion channel is ligand gated ion channel. And this is the ion channel when uh, a ligand binds with it. Ligand could be any chemical molecules, could be a neurotransmitter, a neuromodulator, or uh, even a hormone. But most of the time, it's a neurotransmitter. So when it binds with the channel, the channel becomes open. So we will see this a lot in the nervous system. Now let's look at the carrier. Carrier are usually dealing with the bigger molecule. So this molecule, if you open a bigger uh, channel, it will actually damage the cell, the, damage the inside and outside environment. So they could not make a channel, they use carrier. The difference between the channel and carrier is carrier does not provide a direct opening of these two sites. It needs to cause a structure change, a conformational change to make the molecule and turn it to the other side. Because of the structure change, it's much slower compared with ion channel. Also, this uh, carrier, he has binding site. He has binding site for the molecule, so he can be saturated. Compared with ion channel, usually ion channel, we, we don't worry about saturation. Uh, so every time you have a binding site, it's like you have a limited seat in the in a bus, so you have limited uh, number of molecules can be carried. But it's still a facilitated diffusion. It's not a pump, a pump like ATP is. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, in the next few slides. So it's, it's still a passive transport. So carriers are similar to enzymes. You learn the enzymes function in the intrabio. Uh, they have binding site, they have specific substrate uh, able to bind with the enzyme and enzyme can be affected by temperature, pH because they are protein, they can be denatured. And they also can have the competition and saturation because they have a binding site. So if the binding site has been blocked by the other molecule, and they, they won't be able to perform its function, so it is competition. And also, when you have too many substrate, they have the weight, so they can be saturated. They also have the allosteric site, that's the different site. Uh, when the chemical molecule binds with the allosteric site, they can upregulate, which is increase the, the enzyme function, or downregulate it, which is to decrease the enzyme function. So, in that part, carriers are very similar to enzymes. They, Carrier all have this characteristic. Now let's move to the active transport. So this part, that's the active transport. And the definition of active transport is the, the cell. So we're in the cell's point of view. Need to use the ATP to make this transportation happen. And some of them we learn them in the intro bio already, like this part, like endocytosis, exocytosis, phagocytosis. This the cells make the cell membranes moving in, moving out, so they can swallow the molecule in or release the molecule out. And that's this part. Now let's focus on this part. This part is you the cell use the ATP as an energy source. They're going to move the molecule against the concentration gradient. So you're moving the molecule from low to high concentration area. And this won't naturally happen. Because it won't naturally happen, you need to give them biological energy. And this is the ATP. So it can be divided into the primary and the secondary active transport. And let's look at the primary active transport. This is called a pump also called ATPase, because this membrane protein requires ATP as an energy source. And pretty, pretty famous example, sodium potassium pump, also called a sodium potassium ATPase. You find here we will see this membrane protein for the whole semester. Every living cell have this. Its function is to use ATP as an energy source. And it works like a pump. So if you think about the pump, you're going to use gasoline, use electricity as the energy source. It can pump the molecule from low to high. And that's exactly how the sodium-potassium pump works. When it works, you use ATP as the energy source. It pumps sodium from low to high. It also pumps potassium from low to high. So sodium environment, this is a cell. The sodium environment is low inside, high outside. So when this pump works, it's going to keep pumping sodium out. 
Potassium, potassium is different. Potassium is high inside the cell and low outside the cell. So this pump keep working, you keep pumping potassium in. And it maintains the environment. So the ECF is high sodium environment and the ICF is high potassium environment. So this is like the AC system. You keep running 24 hours a day, seven days a week to maintain the ECF and ICF sodium potassium environment in the correct concentration. And this is a primary active transport. And every time it works, it pumps three sodium out and two potassium in. So it only pumps three positive charge out and it pumps two positive charge molecule in. So you can you can you can you can guess it's gonna create a, a different uh, electrical gradient as well. So when we talk about uh, neurons, how they are able to make the inside more negative than the outside, well, that's the one running 24 hours a day, seven days a week to make the not just the high sodium outside, also it pump more positive charge in and out than in. It can make the inside become more negative. So in the neurons, the inside is about minus 70 millivolt. And this video show you how the sodium potassium pump work. I'll leave this to you. And these carrier proteins, they have specificity. So each carrier protein only carry the molecules they are supposed to carry, like a sodium potassium pump, only work on the sodium and potassium. If you want to move, uh, if you want to move calcium, you have to use the calcium pump. Uh, if you want to use the move the hydrogen, you have to use the hydrogen pump. So they have specificity. And they can have competition. So you can block this molecule, block the binding site because they have binding site. So you can block it and suddenly it won't work. And the toxic molecule to block sodium potassium pump is Wabin. Wabin is also called the arrow poison. Uh, it's found in on the plant and it's been used in, in Africa. They use it, they put it on the arrow and when they use the arrow to shoot animal or sometimes their enemies, you will block this. And once you block this, you found wow well, the sodium potassium pump won't work. And when it won't work, the environment, ECF, ICF environment will be will be different. And it turned out is the, the cells won't work. So uh, when they use the po the arrow to shoot the animal, the arrow animal won't be able to run so they can hunt. Or sometimes they shoot the enemy, they can they can hurt the enemy. And they can be saturated. Uh, I use the UT shuttle as an example. So when you have too many students, well if each shuttle they can only take 40 and when you have 40 students, you can take. And when you have 40 ones, well, you only take 40. So one have to wait. And this is the situation. This is the situation. And when we look at the saturation curve, it looks like this. So every time I show you a picture, the first, you look at what's in the X and what's in the Y axis. So you found the X axis is concentration of glucose, plasma in the blood, so you know that's the blood sugar level. And the y-axis, that's the transportation rate. This is how many glucose can be transported transported per time. And that's the transportation graph. So before you reach the saturation curve, that's the blood sugar level. So it starts from zero. That's when you are very hungry, your blood sugar level is pretty low. So you found, okay, it can handle the transportation. And when you start to increase the blood sugar level, and you can still handle it. It's like, okay, you increase the student number from 5 to 10 to 20, and the UT shuttle can still handle it until you reach the situation. So say this shuttle can only carry 40 students. You have 40, you reach the situation. You reach the situation. When you have 41, they can only transport 40, so one have to wait. When you have 42, well, you, they, they still transport 40. When you have 200, they can still transport 40. So you reach the transport maximum. When this happens, it can only transport that many sugars. 
in turn out the other blood sugar will stay in the blood. It can damage the kidney. So that's what happened in the diabetes patient. They have to watch the carbohydrate they eat because they, when they eat too much carbohydrate, the body is not so good at transporting glucose because their body is insensitive to insulin. So they won't be able to put enough GLUT4 on the cell membrane. And quickly, their uh, cell transportation will transport the maxima. And all the blood sugar, they can stay in the blood. They're going to damage the filter, and which is the kidney. So it can, it can cause the kidney failure. And they have to do the dialysis because kidney is the filter in the body. We'll talk more about it in, uh, in the renal system, the last system. Now let's look at the secondary active transport. So we finish the primary, let's look at secondary. Definition of secondary is it's still an active transport, so the cells still need to use ATP as the energy to move the molecule from low to high. So the cells still need to use ATP. But the cell always try to save some ATP. It's like, okay, if the cell have 20 membrane proteins, each one takes three ATP, and then quickly gonna run out of ATP. So it always try to look for, oh, can I save a few ATP here or there? And this time they use the concentration gradient of the X molecule. First, they transport the X molecule from low to high. And the X usually is sodium, but it could be something else. Usually it's sodium because the sodium potassium pump, like this one is the AC, keep running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the sodium is high outside, low inside already. This time, they use the concentration gradient of sodium. So sodium love to move from outside, this is high, to the inside, this is low. And they, they create the membrane protein. The membrane protein has a binding site for sodium, also for glucose. They want to move glucose from low to high. So instead of creating a glucose pump, use ATP to pump glucose from low to high, it takes advantage of the concentration gradient. Use the concentration gradient, because concentration gradient is the energy source. They use the concentration gradient of sodium in order to move glucose from low to high. So this does not directly use ATP because this membrane protein does not use, use ATP, but we always look at it in a cell's point of view. So the cells still use ATP to make this happen because it needs to make the so sodium high outside, low inside. So this is called the secondary, sometimes it's also called indirect active transport. It moves the sodium use the concentration gradient of X, that's the first molecule, in order to move Y molecule against its concentration gradient. That's the secondary active transport. An example, sodium glucose sympoter. They can move in the same direction, we call it sympoter. They can move in the opposite direction, we call it antipoter. So sometimes we have sympoter, we have antipoter, and they all belong to the secondary active transport category. In your uh, small intestines, you have a lot of these examples because that's the busy place. So inside the GI tract, we got the lumen. Uh, this molecule, they need to move from the GI tract. So inside the GI tract, actually, is still outside of your body because if nothing happens, it can go through the whole tube, go to the anus, you can pass them out. They're still outside of the body. You want to take the nutrients from the lumen that's inside the GI tract through the apical membrane. Now it goes through the uh, basal lateral membrane to here. So it goes through two membranes. To here, there's the ECF. Now this in your blood. This is in your body. This process is called absorption. So we say some people have bad absorption rate. They eat a lot. They're still skinny. The reason is they have difficulty to move the nutrients from this side, lumen, which is still outside the body, to here, that's inside the body. So like this example, they want to move glucose from low to high. Glucose is pretty high in all those epithelium cells uh, in the small intestines. And they want to keep taking the molecule in because not just those cells need glucose, everybody cell need glucose. So they still need to make glucose in, uh, even though they have enough glucose in the epithelium cells. So they need to work against the concentration gradient and they use the secondary active transport. They take the concentration gradient of sodium as the energy source to move glucose from low to high. And now they're inside the cell, from the inside the cell to the ECF. Uh, they just use a glucose carrier because it's gonna move from high to low. So this is passive transport. And now they put the sodium potassium pump to maintain the correct concentration of sodium and potassium. So that's the example of how the epithelium cells move glucose 
do the absorption of glucose from this side, lumen side, into the uh, into the ECF. Okay, let's take a break.